Okay, so today what we're going to do on day two of 12.4 is we're talking about side lengths or segment lengths. I and mean, it's not sides necessarily, but it's sides of the angles we were working with yesterday. We're looking at segments. And there's a relationship here. And this relationship happens and we're able to use it. I've got A and B of the same segment, the same chord, multiplied together, C and D of the same chord multiplied together, they're equal to each other. End of story. I don't have to do anything else. They have a product relationship. Okay? Now, C can't, C can't. A couple blind guys with really bad English skills, right? Okay, it's a bad joke. W, outside the entire length. So if we do the outside value, W, times the entire length, x plus w, we can relate that to the outside, y, times the entire length, z plus y. The outside value times the entire length is the relationship we're looking at. Okay, that's why I've got this written down. Make sure you have this, because these last two, this is for two and three, the outside value, the outside length of the segment, the outside length is the length from the circle to where they meet, and the entire length of the circle, the entire length, meaning the entire length going from the place where they meet to the far side of the circle. That's the entire length. That's where y plus z came from. y is the outside part. In w, w is the outside part. x plus w is the entire length of that segment. So it boils down to outside times entire length of one is equal to the outside times entire length of the other. That's the relationship we're working with today. And whether it's secant, secant, or tangent, secant, it's the same. But now here's a cool thing. Tangent, the outside, and the entire length is the same. X times X. I'm done with the new stuff. Let's practice. This one, two chords are meeting in the circle, so I have a relationship that the product of the two parts of the, each chord are equal to each other. So I know 6.5 times m is equal to 3 times 7. That's the relationship I'm setting up. And after I do the setup, I solve using algebra. So I have to read my notes to know the properties, know the, pro the things I'm going to apply, make sure I recognize in a picture how to apply it and when, you know, because, hey, I got two chords. All right, this is what I'm going to pull out and use. And people are, how did you know? I reread my notes, I read diagrams, and I applied the properties I learned. And if I'm not sure, I ask questions. And I repeat and I repeat, and I repeat until my questions are less and I try more difficult problems, okay? So I'm here, I get this going, 6.5 meters is equal to 21, divide 13.23, done. Now, the difference between that and the next one, look at the picture, look at the picture. This one and A, I had two chords meeting inside the circle, okay? And I was missing a piece for a length of segments. Nothing about angles here, okay? There's nothing about angles and that's why I'm pulling out the segment length relationships. Here in B, I've got the outside is 16, the entire length is 16 plus X. The outside is 14, the entire length is 14 plus 20. And some people ask me at this point, after I do this, where did 34 come from? 14 plus 20 the entire length times the outside piece, 14, is equal to 16, that's the outside piece, times 16 plus x, that's the entire length, from where they meet to the far side of the circle. Okay, these are segment values. Okay, and by the way, a segment ray or line that crosses a circle in two spots is called a secant, and that's a review from yesterday's notes. Okay. If I have a tangent, where it stops on the outside, comes in contact, and a secant, we use the same relationship, except the tangent, as I just square it. Now, at this point, after I set it up, I'm off to the races. So go ahead and finish solving.
You guys got your calculators? Get her done. Being passive on this doesn't work because you... This is all I'm doing. From now on, I'm just doing example problems. If you don't get it after the example problems, you weren't really using your brain while we were doing it. You were just copying what was in front of you, and that doesn't help us. I want you to solve for x. And then look at what we set up and try to set it up and see because that's a tangent, which is still outside times entire length is equal to outside times entire length. In the case of a tangent, the outside and entire length is the same value. So 34 times 14, got that in my calculator. And I just go ahead and solve. I got 13.75 is x. Are you okay with that? Now remember, yeah. after I do the recognition of which property I'm applying, notice property recognition? No way. I gotta recognize the property? Yeah, by reading the notes, making sure you know the situation in a diagram and what to do. After you do that, you apply it. Now, in this next one, this is the formula that's in front, but I don't remember it as a formula. I put it together. Hey, you know, this is a situation where the outside times the entire length, x times x, and 6 times 13.5 is going to be the same. Outside times entire length equals outside and times entire length. If you can chunk them together like that, it goes well. So go ahead and make the solve, because now you multiply them together and take the square root. Those people who are done with this one, go to the next two problems. Go. Go after them. Go after them. Get them done. Do 7 D and E and get after 8. Those people that are uh, still got questions, let's talk. Do this picture first. Hopefully in 6C, I have a numbering issue, but hopefully in 6C, you're okay. You get your 9. Okay? And the setups for this next one. I've got outside times entire length. 6 times 14 is equal to 7 times 7 plus y. And I've got my outside times entire length. Z squared equals 8 times 24. Okay? Now, after you finish, go ahead and do eight. Remember, it's about us applying properties we just went through. The more often we have the chance to look at a situation where we apply it, the easier it'll be for us to see those situations in the future. Because like, when we get the problem A, that's a challenging problem. Not because of the math, but because of you being able to weed out the significant stuff for each section, or each part of the problem, I should say. You guys are doing a great job. These are the values I'm looking for, maybe. Okay. Are you doing okay to get there? Now remember, it's all about setup. Once you get the setup, it hits quick. The outside times the entire length. That's where 14 came from. The outside times the entire length. That's where 7 plus y came from. Okay? Be careful. The number one mistake I noticed on this is people don't grab the outside by itself times the entire length. They'll grab the inside times the entire length, and they'll make that simple mistake 
don't rush, make sure it's outside times entire length. That's the mantra, we gotta hum outside times entire length, outside times entire length while we're doing this so we can be you know, more focused on the problem. As you fill in, hopefully these went well. Good? Any questions, follow-ups? Because I'm just gonna start tinkering it and make it more difficult right now, okay? So it's feeling pretty confident? Now, the next thing, check it out. I have three problems that are different. I have X, I have Y, I have Z. Those are the things I'm finding, okay? Now, those people who are done with finding X, Y, and Z and have done problem nine already, just go ahead and start your assignment today, okay? Which is just completing the 12-4 uh, worksheet. And you'll have enough time in class to do it, okay? Those people who aren't quite there, that's okay. Let's talk about it. First thing, I've set this one up. You don't have to have one value right to do or be successful in another, okay? So I'm going to start with the order of our section. I'm going to find the angle value, y. Okay, I'm not going to start with x. I'll start with y because we started with angles. I've got the average of 85 plus 45 divided by 2 because it's average is equal to my y. That's where 65 comes from. Remember, this is intercepted, this is intercepted, y is an angle value at 65 degrees. Once I recognize the property, I apply it. Properties are based on what it looks like in the picture and the actual application is applying it and getting it done. I have to recognize that though. No one else is gonna do it for me. If it's not you, it's nobody. The next one, in order of what we learned today, okay, first, I'm gonna do this again. People are like, what? What's up with this? Remember, I have two chords inside a circle. Two chords inside a circle. The parts that are made by the intersection are multiplied together and set equal to each other. So I got nine times six is equal to 10 times X. I got X is 5.4. Okay, it's that straightforward once we recognize the property we're doing. Did you notice? I'm just applying the property. I'm not writing anything down because it's the product of the parts of the chords made by the intersection of the two chords. Now, my last one, as I'm going through here, I've got a tangent and a secant. Well, a tangent, z squared, the outside times the entire length. And a secant, 6, the outside, times the entire length is 6 plus 6 plus 9. Although there are three numbers there, that's the entire length. It's 21. So I've got z is equal to the square root of 6 times 21. What is that, 11.2? 11 11.22? 11 yes, no? Yeah, but we're supposed to go to the 10, so it's 11.2, okay? And we're done, completely and totally because of property recognition. I learned from rereading my notes, looking at pictures, looking at how the application of each property interacts with the circle, and I'm able to apply it quite quickly. When at first you don't succeed, reread again, apply the pro read the diagrams, be more familiar with which ones in which situation, and you become better and faster at them, okay? Now, there is always reading and making decisions with a problem, a word problem. Number nine is that. In problem nine, let's, let's not do the bakery thing. Let's have it actually the reading. Comprehension is a big deal. So let's look at this. The measure of an angle formed by two tangents to a circle is 80 degrees. Okay? The measure of the angle formed by two tangents to a circle is 80 degrees. So I got a circle. I got one tangent. I got a second tangent. And that's 80 degrees. That's what they're telling me. Okay? That's thing one. I drew my picture. I have an understanding of the question. If I didn't have vocabulary, there's no way I could be successful with this. Next, what are the measures of the intercepted arcs? They want this arc, and they want this arc. 
and able to get one of them, I have the other. I mean, once I have one, I should say, I have the other. Remember this, 12-1, shortcut, 80 in this value, x, <laughs> make 180. Hey, that's got to be 100. 100. The arc is also 100 because that's the central angle. Well, how do I find the other arc? 360 minus 100 is 260 degrees. So I've got both arcs, 100 and 260. I'm done because I know properties. I'm not done because I'm brainiac. I just reread stuff over and over, and I didn't let it go until I knew the properties. In 10, you may start it if you'd like. The answer is 3.1 something, okay? But it is the use of the quadratic formula doing this, mm -hmm. and I will do that tomorrow, okay? I am done with notes, and hopefully things are going well for you, okay? Anybody need me to do yesterday's notes recap real quick? Just be honest. It'll help, okay? Go online, make sure you do the 12 four day one notes. That'll be real helpful with big minus little, okay? Divided by two, that'll be rock solid. And the chords, you know, the average of the two, the interception of the two chords, okay? And we're out of here.